The woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window features a lot of wine, a lot of broken casserole dishes and a lot of shocking revelations. This video is here to explain all those twists and turns, so make sure you've watched the series first. There are lots of spoilers to come. No! With that in mind, time to pour two massive glasses of red and get down to business. Anna sees a woman being murdered in the window in the house across the street. Don't worry, I won't keep saying that. The woman is Lisa Maines, the air hostess girlfriend of Neil, who is the handsome dad who has just moved into the house across, no, the property opposite Anna's. Anna is settling in for her nightly pint of wine when she sees Lisa with her throat cut. Problem is, when the police turn up, there's no blood or body, and Neil says Lisa is out of town in her job as an air hostess. What follows is six episodes of red herrings, to go with all that red wine. Neil's past is littered with dead women, which we'll explain in a second. But he's also seen carrying a body in a sack. Oh my God. Which turns out to be a ventriloquist dummy. Might actually be more creepy than a body. It's my ventriloquist dummy. What? Then there's Rex, arrested in episode six once the police find Lisa's body. Turns out he was under surveillance for a different crime and was recorded threatening to kill Lisa. I swear to God, Chastity, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to cut you into little pieces so they can't find you. Again, we can explain that one in a minute. The biggest red herring of them all is Anna herself. Lisa's body was found near one of the painter's palette knives. And to make matters worse, she had accidentally brandished the knife at Carol in an earlier episode. You stop telling people that I have a drinking problem, Anna! And was seen having an argument with Lisa. Let me call you back. We know it was about her throwing away smelly colouring pens, but to the outside world, it looked like a threat. This, in turn, unlocks a memory in Anna of stabbing Lisa with the palette knife. And there's blood dripping down from the attic. The solution is a bit more innocent. Oh my god. The blood is red paint, and her memory comes from slashing at a painting of Lisa. As we see early on, Anna's trauma prevents her from finishing any painting, and makes her destroy her half-finished attempts. She no more murdered Lisa than she murdered these flowers. I didn't stab her. I didn't kill anybody. OK, maybe it's a bit sinister that she was painting pictures of Lisa in the first place, but it's better than being an actual murderer. No, the shocking reveal is that it was Neil's daughter, Emma, who was responsible all along, driven to a murderous rage by Lisa's refusal to buy her chocolate bars. Emma, people always underestimate children, underestimate what they're capable of. We can't be the only ones who got chills from her transformation from young entrepreneur to violent maniac. Emma then stole Anna's palette knife when she was distracted getting her checkbook and used that to frame her. And if you're wondering why Neil didn't suspect anything, well, he missed the murder itself because he was practicing ventriloquism in the bathroom. But what about her absence after that? As Detective Lane explained earlier, it would be easy for someone to take Lisa's phone and text fake messages to Neil. I'm sure he has her phone somewhere. Texted himself an alibi, sent all those texts to Neil. Neil also thought Lisa was flying to Seattle as an air hostess. But, as we discover, she wasn't an air hostess. The airline in question, Olympia, doesn't even fly to the West Coast. And because Lisa was lying about her job, it made it all the more easy for Emma to hide her murder. Of course, that first question should maybe be, who killed Chastity? Yes, it turns out Lisa was living a double life, working with her partner in crime, Rex, to scam rich men. And Neil was just their next target. Anna had her suspicions way back in episode two, where she discovered that Lisa was being followed by a mysterious account on Instagram called Sexy Rexy. Look at this, fire emoji, fire emoji, eggplant emoji. Eggplant emoji? Do you know what an eggplant emoji means? Yeah. It means a dick. At the time, Anna thought Lisa was having an affair, but it's more complicated than that. Lisa is actually Chastity, a bartender at the strip club where Rex works as a dancer. When the two meet, she draws him into a scheme. 
She targets recently widowed men and tricks them into starting a relationship, before introducing Rex as her sick brother in order to scam money out of them for a fake operation. They're pulling off the scam with Neil when Lisa slash Chastity is murdered, which is why Rex turns up on Anna's doorstep, before moving to Anna's stairs, shower and kitchen worktop. One reason Anna is suspicious of Neil is because when she looks into his past, she finds a trail of bodies. Oh my God. Well, two bodies. I think that counts as a trail. There's Neil's wife, Meredith, allegedly drowned in the lake, and Maxine, Emma's teacher, who fell off a cliff during a school trip chaperoned by Neil. Neil was the only adult present at both crime scenes, which leads to Anna picturing him as the killer. Of course, the only other person at both scenes was Emma herself, and as we now know, this kid is not as sweet as the chocolate she's selling. Jealous of the second child on the way, she killed her pregnant mum by sabotaging the late pier. She also pushed her teacher from the lighthouse for reasons unknown. There's a surprising amount of upper body strength in that tiny kid. <laughs> Throughout The Woman in the House, Anna is convinced there's something bad happening in the attic. Hello? She hears creaks and we see a shadowy figure at the end of the first episode. Again, it's all a harmless misunderstanding. Well, as harmless as having a handyman secretly living in your loft can be. Buell has been living up here. Yes, turns out that friendly Buell has been sleeping in the rafters. It's easy to suspect the DIY expert of being up to no good. Not only has he spent several years fixing that mailbox, but he's played by Cameron Britton, forever associated in our heads as the terrifying Ed Kemper in Netflix serial killer drama Mindhunter. Thankfully, his only crime here is being a very slow worker. And maybe some inappropriate taxidermy. The show ends with a final twist as Anna flies out to New York one year later. Red or white? Oh, no thank you, I don't drink wine anymore. I'll have a vodka. She sits next to a mysterious businesswoman played by film legend Glenn Close and accidentally drinks herself into a stupor by mixing vodka with a Xanax prescription. She wakes up, finds Glenn Close's body in the toilets, only for the body to vanish when she alerts the crew. Yes, it's almost the same setup as the murder that kicked the show off. Let's get what? you back to your seat. Though this time, not only has the body gone missing, but the crew claim there wasn't a passenger in the seat to begin with. There was no one in seat 2A. Just as the police thought Anna was imagining Lisa's murder based on the book she was reading at the time, The Woman Across the Lake, Anna is now reading the sequel, The Girl on the Cruise. If you look carefully at the blurb on the back, it's the same story as hers. Having survived one mystery, the heroine takes a trip, only for a lady to vanish from the boat she's on. Is this Anna's mind playing tricks or a setup for a sequel? One thing is for sure, after eight episodes of pitch perfect parody, we devour some more. Bingo. And so we reach the end of, deep breath, the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. Who knew a comedy could keep us this gripped? If you're looking to see how accurate the parody is, you could check out the woman in the window on Netflix. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, subscribe to Still Watching Netflix for more videos like it.